Okay, lesson 3.6. It actually builds or extends the idea of slope to equations of lines. And we'll look at two types of lines, parallel lines and also perpendicular lines. So that's what we're doing today. So we'll also do some graphs of lines. And uh, yeah, try to do this. Write and graph equation lines. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, our objective, students will be able to write the equation of a line. How do you write the equation of a line? That would be the natural essential question. All right, so we'll start off with the easiest case first. Um, but, whoa. Um, we're going to use this slope-intercept form. And um, so what we need is we need the slope and we need the y-intercept, okay? So this is our slope, okay? Okay, and this is the y-intercept, all right? And the y-intercept is where the graph is crossing the y-axis. So, and all we need is the y-coordinate. So there's our y-intercept, and we just need the y-coordinate of that point. Okay, so the y-intercept is 0, 4, but we just need the y-coordinate. So what this means is that this number here is 4. In other words, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and so this, this would be 2, this would be 3, and of course this point right here would be 4. So there's your y-intercept. Now, uh, the other thing we need is the slope. Well, remember, slope is rise over run. And you'll notice this slope has to be negative because the line goes downward as we go from left to right. As we move left to right, this line is going downward. So basically, if you work with the graph, you can figure out the slope fairly easy. Uh, the slope in this case, um, if we use this point and this point, we we go down, we go down four units, right? We go down this way. We're going down. We go down four, and then we go over this way, a positive, a positive two in the in this direction here. So the slope is negative four over positive 2, which is simply equal to negative 2. So now we found this number for the slope, and that goes in right there. So the equation of the line that we're after is equal to negative 2, x, we found the y-intercept, it's 4, and there you have it, we're done. Wasn't that easy? Ha! Huh. So we're going to be looking at the easiest case first, and that's the case where we write the equation of a line from a graph. You get the y-intercept, you get the slope, plug them in, you're done. Mm -hmm. Now this is so much fun, you'd like to try it yourself, right? So take a moment. Uh, see if you can do this on your own. Maybe someone can do this on their the Moby pad here and try it out. See if you can get it. What are the two pieces of information you need? You need the slope and the y-intercept. I recommend that you write down the equation every single time you do this. Y is equal to m x plus so we need to figure out this one, and we need to figure out this one, and as you can see, the y-intercept looks like to me, this would be negative 1 here, negative 2 here, negative 3. So negative 3 would be right here. Now you'll notice as we go from left to right, in this case, the line is actually going, you know, if you use this point and maybe this point here, uh, we're going upwards, okay? We're 
we're going up. And so it has to be a positive slope. So how do we calculate slope? Well, again, it's rise over run. So uh, the rise is telling us how much it goes up or down. And the run is telling us how far it goes left or right, okay? So in this case, we go up one, two, three, four. We'll go over one. And there we go, there's a nice crisscross point there. So we use this point or this point up there, but the point is we go, we go up four units. Let's see that, one, two, three, four. And then we went, so we went up four, okay. And then we went over this way, one unit this way. So one this way, and we'll go, we'll go over four this way. Up four and over one, okay. So the slope then is four over one, or simply four. So then that means this m is four, and so the equation that we're after is equal to 4x minus 3. Hopefully you got the same answer. Um, and that's how you get a graph, excuse me, the equation of a line from the graph. Now that's the easiest scenario that we will deal with. Um, but from there we have to deal with uh, parallel lines and we also have to deal with perpendicular lines. Now, we need to use the facts that we had from the previous lesson. Let me just remind you what those facts were. Uh, fact number one, if you're dealing with parallel lines, okay, okay, then we know that slope number one is equal to slope number two. If we're dealing with perpendicular lines, then we know that slope number one times slope number two is equal to negative one. And the idea that we want to remember is that these are going to be reciprocals. So this, if this is five sevenths, then this slope here would be negative seven fifths. And we remember from yesterday that one of these has to be positive and one of them has to be negative if the product is going to be equal to negative one. So there's a little recap of what happened yesterday. Well, we're going to be using these two ideas with equations of lines. So, in our first scenario, we have a parallel line. So what do we want? We want an equation of a line that passes to the point negative one, positive one, that is parallel to the equation y equals two x minus three. Now, you don't need to graph these equations to, to find out the equation of the line. Um, it may be helpful in the beginning, it may be helpful in the beginning to to do that, but uh, it's not required. So what do we need? Well, we need to use this equation again, and we're gonna use the idea that slope number one is equal to two. Remember, this is written right here for us. Remember, this is written in the form, y is equal to m x plus or minus b. You see, so the slope is always the number that's sitting in front of x. So um, this two, there's your x right there, okay? There's the x, so that means this number in front of the x is the two. We call that a coefficient. The coefficient of, of this is, of this term right here is two. Well, for the time being, we don't care about this y-intercept. We want a new line that's parallel. And see, so what happens is you, you have a line already and you wanna find a new line. And the y-intercept for, for maybe this first line was negative three, I think. And the new line, we want it to be somewhere else. So it has a different y-intercept. So we don't want to use the y-intercept of the first line. 
uh, that's kind of what we have to do now on this new line. Well, anyhow, let's get back to our problem and let's do some calculations. So let's recap. Um, the slope that I'm after is right there. So the slope number one is equal to two. Since we're dealing with parallel lines, I know that the slopes must be the same. So that means that slope number two is equal to two also. They're both the same. So that number is figured out. Okay, so what I can do is I can rewrite this with, with the information that I just gained. So y is equal to two times x plus b. Now, I have to calculate the new y-intercept. Again, it's, it's not gonna be equal to the old intercept. It's gonna be a new one. So how do I find that out? Well, I can find that out because I was given a point. I was given this point. I want the parallel line to pass through this point. Well, guess what? That point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So what I'm gonna do is put in this x right here for that x right there. And I'll put this y value in right here for this y value right here. And that will allow me to solve for the y-intercept. So check this out. I got one is equal to two times a negative one plus b. And now just simply use your basic algebra skills and solve for b. Um, so this is one is equal to negative two plus b. And naturally I wanna move the two. So I can use uh, the addition property of equality here. We learned back in chapter two, we can add the same number to both sides of an equal sign. And so I get b is equal to three. So now I have my two pieces of information. I have the slope and now I just calculated the y-intercept. So let's continue right, right over here. I get y is equal to two x plus three. How about that? Is this easy or what? Well, it's not quite as easy as the first problems we did a little bit more work but you just need to do these steps and you'll come to the answer also on on your own now you try it um, once again we're told that we have a parallel line so you're going to use the fact that slope number one must equal slope number two and since this is written in the correct form, you can read off the slope immediately because it's written in this slope intercept form. And so your slope is right, right, right there. You see? So the first clue is given to us. We have y is equal to the new line is gonna be six times x times but we got to figure out the new y-intercept and it's not this one because that's the first line and so if you we were to look at the graph um, the y-intercept of that line would be 4 and, and so it crosses right here it has a slope of 6 so it's a pretty steep line it's kind of going up like this and kind of coming down like this it's a pretty steep line Oh, whoops. Uh, and so uh, anyhow, it has, it has a pretty steep line. Well, what we want to do is find a second line that's parallel to that one that has the same, same slope, something like that. Anyhow, this parallel line, as you might imagine, there's several parallel lines that would work but we want the one that passes through a special point. It passes through this point two, negative three. So one, two, one, two, three. It has to pass through this point right here. So the parallel line that we're after is actually, well, it looks like this one. It's gonna pass through like right there. 
that line. Okay, well, here's the deal. You didn't really need to graph this to do the work that we need to do. I just thought I'd do it to give you a little visual about what we are doing down here. Well, so let's get back to business. Let's actually do this without the graph. And so what we know, first of all, is that uh, slope number one is equal to six because it's sitting right there. Remember, that's the slope. This is your y-intercept. And so that means then that slope number two is equal to six also. Okay, so when we're trying to get our equation, we got part of the equation figured out already. It's gonna be six x plus whatever the y-intercept is. Well, <clears throat> we were told that we want this line, parallel line, to pass through this point here. Well, that's my x-coordinate. So I could put that in right here and that's my y coordinate, so I could put it in right here. And once again, that will allow me to solve for b. So I have negative three is equal to six times two. Uh, it's supposed to be a plus here. Plus b. Well, this will just simplify us. And we can use, since we have an equal sign, we can use the uh, subtraction property of equality, which means we could subtract the same number from both sides of an equal sign. And that will allow us to get B is equal to negative 15. Well, I think I now have my equation, the equation that's parallel to this given line right here is going to be Y is equal to 6X minus 15. Now once again, notice that for parallel lines, you will have the same slope. Uh, it's just that you'll have different y-intercepts now. Okay, so um, the other type of line that we can deal with is a perpendicular line. Now the process is all the same. Uh, the only difference this time is that we have perpendicular. So instead of having slope one equal to slope number two, that's the case for parallel lines, we need to have two slopes that are perpendicular. So we need to have this outcome. Slope number one times slope number two equal to negative one. So we're simply going to use the reciprocal idea that we learned yesterday. So let's continue. Um, so here's my given line and from that given line I can get the slope. So I know that slope number one is equal to negative two. Now if I write that as a fraction, <coughs> I want to go ahead and get slope number two from that. Slope number two then is going to be the reciprocal. So I flip that and get one half. And remember, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. And so since that one's negative, this one has to be positive. So there's my slope. I already have part of the equation figured out. Okay, so I know then that y is equal to one half x. But I still need to figure out what b is. That's the question. Haha, <laughs> reminds me of, well, William Shakespeare, the play Hamlet, to be or not to be. <laughs> well, okay, back to uh, math. So I could use this point right here. This is x, this is y. So what I can do is I can plug this x in right here. I can plug this y in over here. And that will allow me to solve for b. So notice that I get 3 here is equal to 1 half times 2 plus b. Well, that will allow me to solve for b. Well, half of 2 is 1, of course, so I have 1 is equal to uh, 3, and then I have a plus b here. So now I can use the subtraction property of equality, since I have an equal sign right here. 
I'm going to subtract 1, subtract 1 here, and that gives me b is equal to 2. All right, well, so now I can combine the two pieces of information. We found the slope here on the y-intercept here. So that gives me an equation of my perpendicular line. So I get uh, 1 half x plus 2. All right, now notice once again, let's just compare the two slopes. The original slope was right here. And you compare that to this slope right here, it is perpendicular. It's going to be the negative reciprocal of the given line. Well, the given line had a slope of negative two. So the negative of that is positive and the reciprocal is one half. So there you have it. We have a perpendicular line to the given line. Now, if we were to graph those, I'll just graph them real quick, because I'm pretty good at graphing. Now the y-intercept here is two, so it would be up here, okay. That would have a y-intercept of two. It has a slope of negative two. So I'm gonna go down two and over one. Okay, so just a quick graph that first line is doing something like this, okay? Well, our new line has a y-intercept of two. It actually crosses here also, but it has a slope of one half. So it goes up, it goes up one, and then it goes over two. So it goes this way. And as you can see, it creates a right angle right there. And so those lines would actually be perpendicular. Now, as far as your assignment goes, the graph, of course, is not required. We can do our work just like we did on this problem. I just thought I'd show you to affirm for you that we are doing things correctly. There's the two graphs that we get if we were to graph them. And everything looks right. Uh, it should be perpendicular. And once again, the slope of this black line is is a uh, negative two so we'll go down two negative two and then over one okay and then the blue line of course the slope is one half so you go up one and over two so anyhow there you go uh, and so let me just back that up so so you can see it a little bit more uh, nicer picture here there's the two equations we came up with. So let's try another one. Um, this this is your opportunity to try it. Um, so here's the quick way to do it. I would just start out by saying, well, what's the slope number one? Slope number one is sitting right there. So that's negative one half. Well, since we're dealing with perpendicular lines, we want perpendicular line. Well, that means slope number two is equal to the reciprocal of that. And you just flip it. And so it's gonna be two over one. And this one's negative, so this one must be positive. And we can just simply write that as two. Okay, so there's our slope. So let's work up here. We have y is equal to two times x plus the y-intercept. Now keep in mind, we never use this intercept because that's the given line. And we're trying to find a new line that's perpendicular to the given line. So we need to solve for b. That's the one we're after, okay? Well, so um, I can use this point I want the perpendicular line to pass through this point. And that means when I plug in these coordinates, it has to make a true statement. So what I could do is I could put this in for X, I could put this in for Y. And so that gives me negative four here is equal to two times three plus B. And I'm just gonna solve from there. I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for uh, I'm going to solve for B, and so this gives me 6.
The subtraction property of equality allows me to subtract 6 here. And that gives me uh, negative 10 is equal to B. Right? Negative 4 and negative 6 gives me negative 10. So that gives me my equation I'm after. I already, I already had the slope. And now I found out the y-intercept. The y-intercept is there, so minus 10. And I won't waste our time graphing these. Um, that just takes a little bit of extra time and it's not necessary. So there you have it. We have a perpendicular line. Now, please understand that you will have one of these on the test. And I'll just guarantee it. You might even have two of these on the test. So make sure you can do this process make sure you know how to do this step here where you just start out by flipping the, the fraction that's always the first step and then you go over to here solve for b use this point right here and make sure you can do this practice it several times like i said i'll guarantee you'll have one of these on the test okay so now we're going to cover some graphing and up to this point you probably did a lot of graphing back in algebra 1 by using this equation y equals mx plus b okay well that form of the equation of a line is called the slope intercept form and by the way if you're paying attention uh, this is one of the answers uh, on your fill in the blanks <laughs> on your study guide so it's called slope intercept form I mean it's like duh okay well there's another way that we can graph equations and that's called standard form and basically standard form puts the X and the Y on the same side of the equal sign so what you're going to have, often we write it like this, capital A, X, plus B, Y, is equal to C. Now please understand, when we're dealing with standard form, this A and B does not stand for slope or anything like that. There is no Y intercept and things like that. Um, but the point is, this method of graphing it's very fast because it uses the idea of finding the x and y intercepts and we use these two little bitty facts here's the deal let's look at a graph of a line if we were graphing a line we would say this spot here and this spot here are the intercepts this one is the x intercept and i'm just going to abbreviate like that x-intercept this one on the other hand is the y-intercept got it right we're good it's where the graph of the line crosses the x-axis okay and the y-axis so where they cross is called the x and y-intercepts that doesn't cause too much confusion right we've been doing the y-intercept for quite a while but when we're graphing in standard form, we use the x and y intercepts both. Now let me just show you how that works. That race is kind of ugly. Okay, so we use this fact here. You see, here's the deal. If we want to find the x intercept, we use the fact that the y coordinate is zero. You see, the y coordinate, you know, normally is going up like this. There's one, two, three, four. Well, what's this value right here? That's zero. So the y coordinate is zero. So here's the fact that we want to use. And here's a fact, okay? A uh, fact, okay? All right. Uh, the x intercept occurs. when y is equal to zero okay now the second fact that we're going to use is just the opposite the y-intercept occurs 
occurs when x is equal to 0. And what that does is it allows us to graph an equation really quick. Now let me demonstrate on the next slide. Okay, so um, there's what we're going to do. We're going to find the x-intercept, let y equal to 0. Well, here's the deal. Look, look, if y is equal to 0, then you have 4 times 0, right? So that term disappears. So that's basically 0. And then you just uh, divide by 3 here, divide by 3 here, and x would be equal to 4. Well, that turns out to be, that turns out to be the x-intercept. And so you just draw it right there. There's 4. x equals 4, right? Well, now you repeat the process. Okay, we'll just repeat the process. And, and now we're going to find the y-intercept. Well, that means x must be equal to 0 because, look, on the x-axis, you'd be right here. There's x equals 2. There's x equals 1. There's x equals 0. So now we're on the y-axis, right? So now you have x is equal to 0. Well, if x is equal to 0, you'd have 3 times 0 right there. And 3 times 0, of course, is 0. So that term disappears. And so now you solve for y. Well, now you divide by 4 here and divide by 4 here. And you get y is equal to 3. Okay? Well, there's your y-intercept. So now what you do is you graph the line going through those two points. It wasn't that easy. That's all there is to it. So graphing a line when you have the equation in standard form, you'll find, for the most part, it's pretty easy. Although sometimes you have to deal with fractions. So just be aware of that. Let's try another one because it's so easy. All right. So basically, you find the two intercepts. OK, it doesn't really matter which one you begin with. If x is equal to 0, OK, that means this term is gone. And now you can find y. Well, don't forget there's this negative here. So you need to divide this side by a negative 3. Divide this side by a negative 3. And we get y is equal to a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we get y is equal to 4. So there's our y-intercept right there. Now, you just repeat the process now, and you're going to say, well, okay, if y is equal to 0, okay, so let's just go back up here, and let's restart here. Um, I have found that most people could do this in your head, but anyhow, if y is equal to 0, then what you'd have is a 0 sitting right here, and 3 times 0 is 0, of course, and so that term would be gone. And so now we're solving for x, right? Well, to solve for x, all we would do is divide by 2 here and divide by 2 here. Well, negative 12 divided by 2 is just uh, negative 6, right? So come over here to negative 6. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, draw a graph through this point here. Bad. Wow, that's, wow, that's pretty bad. I tried, but let me back that up. <laughs> Imagine this is straight. All right, it's supposed to go through the two points. Well, I think you get the picture. Uh, anyhow, graphing the standard form is pretty easy. You use the x and y intercepts. All right, let's try an application problem. Now, a lot of these application problems are hokey, but oh, let's just try it. You can rent DVDs at a local store for $4 each. Wow, that's pretty spendy. An internet company offers a flat fee of $15 per month for as many rentals as you want. How many DVDs do you need to rent to make an online rental a better buy? I think most of you don't even need to do a graph. You don't even need to deal with an equation to solve this problem. Let's see. So, like, if we do this one at the local store, it would be $4 each. So the first CD will be $4. The second CD would be $8. 
Uh, the third CD uh, would be twelve dollars. The fourth CD would be sixteen, and that already is bigger than fifteen dollars. So, how many DVDs do you need to rent to make the online a better buy? Well, you don't get a better buy for three of them, but you do get a better buy for four. So. And and so we're gonna say uh, at least four. <laughs> so I'm not sure what this equation or what this problem has to do with equations. I mean, you could set up these equations and say, well, y one is equal to um, let's see, four x and. Uh, y2 is equal to 15 and then uh, you can find out when they're equal to each other like 4x is equal to 15 and divide by 4 here and divide by 4 here and you get x is equal to 3.75 well but that would be the exact answer but keep in mind we're talking about CDs or DVDs so you cannot have a 0.75 you have to round up to the next the next CD and so that would give you X is equal to 4 so if you really 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 want to you can solve this by setting up two equations there's two equations and we're using the idea when the two equations are equal there's the solution and that's what we found out here although that's not the graph of these two equations and that's just the basic idea so there's an application problem not too bad so in summary we had parallel slopes we had perpendicular slopes uh, we found equations from graphs and we dealt with the uh, slope intercept form right here and then we also did some graphing using the standard form anyhow there you have it we're done so let me just stop